welcome back. This year's Chogham is not only about who's here, but also who's not here. Uh, for instance, uh, we've talked already about Pakistan and Musharraf. Then there's Mugabe and Zimbabwe. There the situation, Zimbabwe withdrew from the Commonwealth, but under great, great pressure, so Robert Mugabe is not here. However, the leader of his opposition, Morgan Changarai, is here. Morgan, it's great to see you again. And, and looking so much the picture of health, because the last things we read about you were, for instance, in March of uh, 2007, the, uh, the beatings up and so on that the regime, Mugabe regime, gave you and so on. And you've obviously made a complete recovery. Yes, uh, David, I, I fully recovered from that ordeal. Uh, it was near fatal, but uh, I've since recovered. And, I mean, it, it really was... How long did it go on for? Did, did it involve torture, for instance? Well, there were just um, indiscriminate beatings of a whole group of people, my full executive, myself, uh, and by all sorts of uh, rogue elements, uh, police in uniform, soldiers, uh, CIO. So it was quite a, it was quite a, a spectacle. Uh, and... Uh, we, we, uh, I then went into hospital for about a week, uh, got patched up, and uh, I've since recovered from that. That's fantastic. What do you think happened to Robert Mugabe? In the first 10 years, the picture we got of him was of doing a rather, in, a rather efficient job yes. uh, in, in his position. Um, but then it's all decayed in terms of both freedom and uh, the rule of law, and also obviously the economy and so on. Did he have a heart attack, do you think? A seizure, or what? I think that the transformation of the man is just an, uh, an enigma for all people. Uh, because, as you put it, uh, he was uh, a wonderful leader the first 10 years. I suppose when you overstay, you have also got diminishing returns. And when you get challenged because of those diminishing returns, you react. And I think it is the reaction that has uh, caused all this total imbalance and out of step with, uh, with his original, original perception. What happens next, Morgan? Are you going to stand or not in the elections? What is happening is that with the South African mediated talks, uh, they are at an advanced stage. Uh, we believe if successfully concluded, there's a difference between what the talks have achieved and what is obtaining on the ground. What we would like to, to ensure is that the next elections are conducted in a free and fair manner, and certainly I will stand as presidential candidate for my party. And are there stories about, uh, in the various papers and so on, about, about uh, here's one saying, Zimbabwe divisions within Shanghai, faction of Zimbabwe lead to violence and they is that is that true well there's no truth you know you know that uh, our party is committed to democratic nonviolent peaceful uh, political discourse uh, the unfortunate thing is that um, the state papers uh, pick at any, any little incident and blow it out of proportion uh, in this case um, there's no truth to that uh, in fact uh, we were having a meeting uh, and uh, there were a few people who were trying to make noise about, you know, we want to be in the meeting, and they were peacefully dispersed. Uh, unfortunately, this is what the script they would like to portray, that we are a violent, uh, undemocratic, uh, unconstitutional movement, and all those kind of accusations. Obviously, it's to try to destroy the brand, which is the MDC and Morgan Trangrai, but uh, I think the people of Zimbabwe know better. And what about you're here, one of the reasons you're here, Chogham, um, is obviously to get more support from the Commonwealth. Uh, what would you like the Commonwealth to do to help the cause of liberty and freedom in uh, Zimbabwe? Just like any struggle, it needs international solidarity. And the Commonwealth uh, is a family of nations to which we were part. Uh, what better to appeal to your family members about what's happening in in your country than, than the Commonwealth. So we expect the Commonwealth to, to keep on uh, addressing and focusing 
on the Zimbabwean crisis as part of their problem. Uh, and uh, together with the rest of the international community. So it is really primarily to put the Zimbabwean crisis on the international radar and to continue to realize that it cannot be an issue that should be forgotten or downplayed. And uh, in fact, you'd like the Commonwealth obviously to do more. They're, at the moment, they're doing less than you would wish. Well, they will, they will have to do more. Of course, I don't know what prescription I can give them, but <laughs> <laughs> certainly I think within the within the annals of the Commonwealth, it is continued to appeal for, for sense, it's continued to appeal for Senja and Mugabe and uh, the rest of the African Brotherhood. Do you think that one day you will be president of Zimbabwe? I believe that um, I've been in struggle to achieve that objective, not necessarily to be president of the country, but certainly to create a new Zimbabwe. Uh, a new Zimbabwe that can provide the basis for the basics for Zimbabweans, and I have no doubt that, uh, given the conditions, that ideal would have been won uh, in 2002, uh, 2005. But as long as there are all these electoral obstacles and roadblocks, uh, it is almost like a, a dream. And would you, if you were in a position to make the decision, would you go along with a compromise that allowed? Robert Mugabe to leave the country with his honor, not his reputation, but honor intact, not sent to jail or not, or not given a, a trial. Would you co cooperate in that for the future of Zimbabwe, or would you say that he must stand trial for his crimes? No, uh, I don't think that any act of vindictiveness or retribution is going to be helpful in our transition. I think that uh, what is absolute is to be magnanimous uh, and, and actually accept that although Mugabe has erred towards the end of his life, he also has made positive contribution in his end life and that that legacy must be protected. But I think that it is the other side, uh, the villain part, which has undermined his legacy. But certainly you cannot go around him. Um, uh, Smith, Smith uh, will just died. Uh, had, uh, had his own blemish, uh, but he was never persecuted. No, would you, would you say that uh, Robert Mugabe or Ian Smith did more damage to Zimbabwe? I think both have equally contributed to, to the regression in the country, in a different way, of course. Uh, but I don't think that racism was, uh, and violence was the proper policy for the country. I don't believe either that Mugabe's uh, so retribution and violence against the opposition, against whatever opposition, against the Matabellas, against the MDC, against the whites, was the right policy. So I think that uh, for Smith, I think history will judge him. For Mugabe, I think that history has already judged him. That that judgment has been made. Well, it's a great joy to be talking again, and uh, I hope uh, peace returns soon to that tortured country of yours. Thank you, David. After the news, I'll be asking, what is the Commonwealth for? And does it have a future, a real future, in the 21st century?